There was a lady called Mrs Llewellyn and uh, she lived in uh, a row of very small cottages um, which I now have discovered having gone and had a look around. Uh, probably located about where the, where the um, boats are moored. It's roughly about there, I'd say. And there was this just a row of small cottages and behind there was a lot of trees and there was a lot of um, horse yards and she had all the horses there. And that's where my brother and I learned how to ride. And eventually my parents bought my brother a horse and um, he would actually um, uh, be an adjustment in the paddock that was between um, what was the peninsula where the, uh, the hospital ended up being built and also where Acton Hotel is still today. I can remember, just vaguely remember, the old workers' cottages that mm. Frank Dunshay used to live in. Mm. And we used to go down there to Mrs Lou's riding school. Yeah, that was it. And that which is in the lake. And there were a lot of little cottages along yeah. there. Yeah. And I can distinctly remember um, sitting atop this enormous racehorse. I was about nine or ten. Um, and there was a lot of pine trees in that, that area. Yeah. yeah. And her thing, it, it, was, it was like an oval thing, which my race, ex racehorse, mm. decided it would much prefer to the little round ring that we were supposed to go round. Mm. Um, bolted with me on top of it too at one stage mm. but anyway that was the end of my riding career um, but I can remember that along the back of it all these little cottages mm. little weatherboard but cottages that mm. were there so the riding school and Bobby Llewellyn that, that was they were great times I recall that Sunday afternoons we'd ride from our place Y Street down and pick up the riding school group and we'd escort them around through Canberra and odd places and back to the school. And at the end of the day, the horses would be watered and quartered and then taken down and let loose in the, uh, Acton, Cot in the uh, Acton Flat, which was uh, the adjustment area where the, the horses would roam. And I don't know how many horses Bobby had. Quite a number, quite a number. I remember Trooper, Bobby Llewellyn's prize racehorse, retired into her care. I don't know whether she purchased it or was given it or whatever, but Trooper was a massive big horse. Uh, in hands high, 16 plus or whatever, ponies were about 14, uh, what was a hand, hands uh, four inches in measurement, so he was well above, uh, above that, and he was the, the local uh, local burn borough, you might say, <coughs> and she run, uh, run him in many races uh, uh, at Acton, and he won quite a number, uh, and she was well renowned for Troop of the Racehorse, yeah. he was a great big hack, never got to ride him, he was really, but um, possibly old uh, Arthur Dudley might have uh, straddled him a couple of times, and I think Bobby might have even ridden him in a race or two because she used to ride in, in picnic meetings. And uh, yeah, that was Trooper. Well, Mrs. Llewellyn, uh, we had, uh, as I say, a number of horses, and she had a paddock near um, uh, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Bridge. And we used to, she used to have a riding school and we'd take the horses from Acton over to the uh, uh, Commonwealth Park or that. And uh, one, one time I was riding one and it propped the road and uh, I decided to take a dive head first. That, so I never got on the horse after that. Well, my brother wanted to be a jockey but he wasn't allowed because of his uh, uh, weight, but he used to ride uh, a trooper, uh, a horse of Mrs. Llewellyn, a big stallion, a big boy, big, big horse. Um, but uh, he wasn't successful, the horse was at times. Uh, just a little local gathering from for Canberra and that at the time. Mrs. Llewellyn was a very powerful creature in the world of the competitive horse riding and in fact my wife on her trips to Canberra before we were married used to take horses from Mrs Llewellyn and ride on the hockey fields. I oh, know she was a she was a good person and she lived up up in Acton as you know up behind that little row of houses. Hmm. My sister was the one who was really interested in horses and we got to mind a horse 
for people who, friends of ours who had an overseas post, and they went and left the horse, and we had the horse, and someone else's back garden over our back fence. Because Caroline was the one who was more interested in riding, she was the one who was allowed to come to Mrs Llewellyn's. And she came and she, she told me they weren't actually lessons. They were never taught to ride. They just learnt to walk a horse and then canter, never a gallop. They got up to trot and that was the end of it. There was no galloping. She wasn't going to risk, risk people having injuries and have to come to the hospital. So my association with, that was, with Acton was the fact that right from very early childhood I was absolutely obsessed with horses. And so finally at the age of about six, I think actually, six or probably six, um, my mother relented and, and let me start riding lessons. So I, I even remember my first day at, at the Llewellyn Riding School. There was a, a dirt road that then that was sort of a laneway really that took you round the back of the cottages and the riding school was there at the back with, on, on the left at the back, it was quite a large open area and it was a very heavily wooded uh, area with pine trees. Must have covered it, it wasn't all that big, it was probably about maybe three acres of, of area um, of very old and very tall pine trees, so it, was, it all happened in there basically. The horses were registered in the paddock across the other side, which is now West Lake. West Basin um, and every morning if you were in the elite sort of group of kids who turned up early you went at, actually out with Bobby Llewellyn and you helped round up the horses for the day's riding but I, by the time I got there they were all sort of saddled and waiting ready to go and there's nothing like the smell of horses it's horses and hay and all the mud and it's most it's a terrific smell so the smell actually still stays very closely in my mind and then I remember days of sitting in a sort of a shed that, uh, well, Mrs. Llewellyn, she was never Bobby Llewellyn, she was Mrs. Llewellyn. I, never, one, I don't think I ever knew that her name was Bobby, it was Mrs. Llewellyn. Um, she had a shed out the back and you had to take your turn in sitting there one day and spending the whole day just cleaning, polishing all the saddles and all the bridles and polishing up the brass bits and all that sort of stuff. When we would do ride, t uh, take rides from the riding school, we'd go out the back of the riding school towards the race course, and then we'd ride down a lane that went beside the race course. And I remember it was literally a lane. I'm sure it had quite tall hedges on each side. It was quite civilised, dirt road. But at the end of this long lane, you came to the river, which was quite wide at that place at that point, but quite shallow. And then we'd clop the horses across. Sometimes actually it was about, it could have been up to about 18 inches deep, but you had to be careful if the horse stopped in the middle of the river and started to pour because that meant it was going to roll because horses like to roll. actually like to roll in the water. So you'd have to madly drag its head up. If its head's up, it's not going to go down and roll in the water. But there was always this sort of terror of crossing the river that your horse was suddenly going to put its head down and start pouring, in which case everybody would shout at you, pull its head up, you know, because otherwise you were going to end up in the drink. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was a very um, friendly sort of environment and, and it was, yeah, it was just a lot, of, a lot of fun with a lot of kids and having a good time, really. Well, the, the earliest memories is just arriving in, 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 in to live in Acton. We loved the house and Right next door was Mrs Llewellyn and she ran, she ran a riding school. And for us, for us kids like us, we would have never, ever, ever had an opportunity to do that sort of thing. Um, but here we were, as long as we helped her, she taught us how to ride um, and then we taught other people how to ride. And we had to go down the early frosty mornings and collect these horses and ride them back up. and, and we didn't even know we were working. We just were having so much fun. We would go down the early mornings, uh, summer and winter all the time, um, from the Acton paddocks and collect the horses and then we'd ride them all up and lead all the rest up. And then we would get ready for the, the lessons on the weekends. Um, so we'd help you know, feed these horses, saddle them, um, go out in the rides if there was a spare horse and we'd go out and help Mrs Llewellyn. Uh, if not, we would just help the other kiddies get on and their horses and do all that. So it gave us an opportunity 
um, that we, as I say, we would never ever have had. I've never have experienced this. And we mixed with all people from all walks of life. You know, there was a lot of the children coming from the grammar, so people who could afford to go horse riding. We certainly couldn't because mum was a widow. And so we were given this wonderful opportunity. And I just remember Mrs Llewellyn and her kindness. She just, and she even paid us sometimes. She'd give us about 10 shillings a fortnight or something. We thought we'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> we had this 10 shillings to go and spend. And her husband, Alex, um, he was a returned soldier. And he used to do all the shoeing of the horses and, you know, so he... He was, he was sort of joined in that way, but Mrs Llewellyn basically ran the whole show and, and Jan's their only child. So, yeah, so she was always there, of course, and we became friends then and still friends today. And as I said to you, that what I loved most of all was having that privilege to be horse riding and part of it all and integrating with children who were, you know, had the best of everything. But they, didn't, they just treated us normally because we were all riding horses together. So there was no discrimination. We were all one. It was like you had one uniform and we we're all one.